Well, good morning, councillors, staff, members of the gallery, our media, and a special welcome back to our communications, head of communications, Alana. Great to see you back on board. Federation Council wishes to advise members of the public gallery that the council meetings will be recorded and available after each meeting on council's website. All care will be taken to maintain the privacy of those in attendance. However, as a visitor in the public gallery, your presence may be recorded. By remaining in the public, public gallery, it is assumed your consent is given in the event of the image views broadcast. This includes any filming by television cameras if, in, if attendance is approved by the general manager or mayor. And I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which we are meeting today, the Bangarang people, and acknowledge the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people who now reside in this area. I extend that respect to elders, past and present of the Bangarang nations. Item three. I'll now call for apologies. Just have the one, Mr Mayor, from Ms Joe Shannon, our Director of Corporate and Community Services, is away on leave, and we have Jared Van Emmerich <coughs> acting in that role. Thank you. Moved by Councillor Thomas, seconded by Councillor Neagle. All in favour? Aye. Aye. Against carried. Okay, uh, item, item number 3.2, um, applications for leave. Or of absence. Don't have any received. Uh, item 4, confirmation of minutes of the ordinary meeting on the 17th of December 2019. Moved by Council Longley, seconded by Council Law. All in favour? Aye. Against carried. Number 5, disclosures of interest. Thanks. Uh, yep, I have a couple received here. One from Councillor Kennedy being in agenda item 8.4, the McCarthy Street subdivision at Malwala, uh, an item, so he's declared a pecuniary interest in that one, and also a pecuniary interest in item 9.4, being the tenders for the Arena Aquatic Centre, a pecuniary interest in that, being that uh, his company is tendered on that job, so uh, Councillor Candy will leave for that one. Also have one from Councillor Sean Whitechurch, uh, item 9.5, the Kyra Sale Yards, being an employee, of a company that tendered for that job and so uh, pecuniary interest in that one and there's a workshop item coming up after lunch on a, one of the other projects here, a Bridge project and a similar thing, the company that's put in for that job uh, is also an employer of that one so we'll leave the room when both those are on so there, there for noting. Thank you. Um, moved by Council Longley, seconded by Council Law. All in favour? Right. Uh, against carry. Item number six is the mayoral minute. Uh, six point one is bushfires. I'd like to acknowledge on behalf of council the devastating fires across the country that have occurred over the summer. Council's thoughts and prayers are with all those impacted, and particularly with the friends and families of those who lost lost their lives as a result of these fires. Would someone like to move that recommendation, please? Moved by Councillor Thomas, seconded by Councillor Kennedy. All in favour? Aye. Against carry. Item number seven, the general manager's report. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The first report is 7.1, the April 2020 briefing session. So I report there to recommend that we postpone the uh, briefing session proposed to be held on the 13th of April and hold that on Thursday, the 16th of April because the 13th is a public holiday for Easter. Thank you. Moved by Councillor Neagle, seconded by Councillor Kendi. All in favour? Aye. Aye. Against carry. 7.2, another report recommending some changes to our uh, meeting calendars. So the June 2020 Ordinary Council meeting, briefing session and workshops, there's some dates proposed there that we move that June Ordinary meeting from the 16th of June and hold it on the 23rd of June. That would allow us a uh, more reasonable time to exhibit our draft budget, operational plan, delivery program for the following year and, and out of years and without the need to have a late June meeting in addition to our ordinary meeting. So those dates would mean that we are proposing to move the workshop as well to that same day and the briefing session would go to the Thursday prior to that. So that's the council's consideration. Thank you. Moved by <coughs> Council Wales, seconded by Council Neagle. Any questions or comments, councillors? If not, I'll put it all in favour. Aye. Against carry. Uh, 
7.3 to September 2020 council meeting briefing and workshop. So again, recommending a shift in the dates there for the reason of the council elections across the state are held um, in September, being held on Saturday the 12th of September. So following on from that process is obviously a week or so where counting uh, still occurs and they uh, do the announcements of successful councillors and then there's a mandatory requirement for an induction program uh, and that tends to uh, take the amount of time we foresee that we would envisage that we'll be having a the reasonable time for the September meeting would be putting it back to the 29th of September, Tuesday the 29th and then obviously those changes to the briefing and workshops as a result of that. Thank you. Moved by uh, Deputy Mayor and seconded by Councillor Law. All in favour? Aye. Aye. Against carried. 7.4 councillors is seeking to formalise a councillor delegate on the Hume Yarrawonga Waterway Management Advisory Group. So the group holds a few meetings a year, usually held them in Albury. I think it's critical cool when it's come forward from one of the councils has um, been in touch with this group, the Federation haven't uh, been on that group for some time. So we're recommending that council would endorse a councillor uh, at this meeting to be part of that group. And we will be invoiced for that. We're not sure of the amount. It's not considered to be anything that's going to be onerous, and we would be able to meet that within our budget. We we proceed to seeking a councillor representative. Thank you. I, I uh, <coughs> suggest maybe the deputy mayor might consider that position. Yes. Councillor Watcher. Yes, Mr. Mayor, if I could, um, in light of that coming to uh, the table, I did speak uh, to the general manager before Christmas regarding uh, correspondence I had with uh, these people. And yes, it was highlighted that the council hasn't had a representative for quite a number of years. Um, I suggested that uh, we should have one, given that it's our section of water, largely between Powell and Mulwala. So um, if there's no other nominations, I'll be able to put in it. And, and uh, council watcher, would you like to substitute for that committee as well? Yeah, I, I think we probably would need to get. Okay. okay. Councillor Long. I'd like to consider uh, Councillor Thomas. She's an irrigator. Um, has a lot of involvement in water, obviously, for, for her occupation, and I, I'd like to per, consider her for this position. Mm. Thank you, Councillor Walsh. Uh, happy to be part of it if we want to do it together. Happy for the two members to be on board of this committee, or, or would you just like to be a substitute, Councillor Thomas? It's up to you. Oh, no. I, I feel that uh, the nominations are quite adequate for where you know, we can go forward with, I think, uh, uh, working out the opportunity of Councillor Whitechurch may be a way uh, for work. And so if, you, if Councillor Thomas is uh, accepting of the fact that nominate Councillor Whitechurch as alternate, I think they'll work together very well. Okay, so yeah. we'll, we'll nominate Councillor Whitechurch and a substitute Councillor Thomas. Happy with that, Councillors? Yep. yep. Okay. Just a move on second. Move uh, moved by Councillor Kennedy, seconded by Councillor Law. All in favour? Aye. 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 Against carry. Thank you. Seven point five councillors is to table the capex capital expenditure reviews for the Kyra Swimming Pool Complex and the How Long Multi Purpose Centre project. Both those projects fall within a spend threshold that would trigger it does trigger uh, capex reviews to be done on those projects to you know, forward forecast the financial projections and and a fairly detailed business case uh, coincides with that. So there's a, a report here just recommending that the council note that report on the tabling of those reviews. So both come through with favourable uh, figures and numbers and they're really key uh, projections that we do feed back into our new long-term financial plan that we adopt um, from 1 July going forward with a, a lot of other work we're doing around our long-term finances asset management, um, valuations, etc. So <coughs> that's just there for notation and that report will go to our Internal Audit Risk Committee just for their awareness as well of those couple of projects. It's wherever one project goes over a million dollars or over 10% of our ordinary rate income. So. Thank you. Moved by Councillor Longmire, seconded by Councillor Neagle. Any questions or comments, Councillors? If not, Councillor Longmire. Yeah, I think the, the comment, Mr Mayor, in regards to the complexity of that that audit it, it was quite involved to read through it and understand it that as she was the subject of the abbreviation of what the what the terminology is it's quite in, encasing on it and I'm not sure if I got my head around it but the understanding looks okay. Yeah. Thank you Councillor. Uh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah,
Yeah, yeah, I've got moving one more Meagle. One more yeah. Meagle. Yeah. Uh, if there's no more comments, I'll put it all in favour mm -hmm. right, against Kerry. Uh, Seven point six is a recommendation to authorise common seal of land, a uh, common seal of council be affixed to associated documents in relation to some land, which is the Moale Industrial Estate Business Park development. So formalising the removal of some easements and placing on some new easements to then allow our seal, our titles to be issued for those blocks down there which has been long awaited, so seeking our seal endorsement. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Moved by Councillor Law, seconded by Councillor Longley. Any questions or comments, councillors? All in favour? No. Aye. Against Kerry. Uh, that's it for the Yeah, thank you very much. Managers. General Manager, we'll now move on to the Director of Corporate and Community Services report. Jerry. Jerry. Thanks, thank you, Mayor. Um, the first report uh, in the minute is Statement of Bank Balances and Reconciliations as of 31 December 2019. The statement shows a balance of uh, $29,801,723.82 minus externally restricted funds of $26,285,730.53 with a final balance of $3,515,993.29 in the general fund. And the recommendation is that the balances and reconciliation as at 31 December 2019 be noted. Thank you. Moved by Councillor Kennedy, seconded by Councillor Meagle. Any questions or comments, councillors? I'll put it all in favour. No. Right. Against Kerry. Uh, the next report is 8.2, Schedule of Investments as of 31 December 2019. And the reporter's table shows the schedule of total investments at $27,212,000. $1.26 and that represents an increase in total investments of uh, $1,059,140.15 since the 30th of November 2019 report and the recommendation is schedule of investments as at 31 December 2019 be noted. Thank you. Moved by Councillor Longley, seconded by Councillor Whitechurch. Any questions or comments? Councillor Thomas. Mm -hmm. It's really a question without notice and it's just in regards to our finances. It's just going back to some of our minutes and I do believe it was prior to our current director, Shannon, that this would have been tabled. But in about October 2018, we actually tabled a motion to form a rate review committee and there was an expression of interest to go out. I was just wondering if you could just make notes, please, just to see where that was up to and I'm really happy to receive an update at the February meeting. Thank you. And just, yeah, that's a great point. And just a quick comment in ahead of that February meeting. So the government, uh, in their decision to allow councils to defer that rate harmonisation, it was originally planned that it had to be in by this 2021 financial year. We have engaged uh, a group to do that process, the same group that's doing our long-term financial plan. And I think the majority of councils, I know one particularly that's going to still go ahead and do it this year um, that we're heading into, but most of the council, including city councils, opted to um, stay and have that extra year to prepare their um, newly ad adopted rate structure across um, the LGA. So our council uh, resolved that we, we continue on the same track and we don't try and rush it through this year uh, coming. So the rates review committee obviously is a key part of that. Leading up to the engagement of that company, we didn't feel there was quite a lot of, quite enough uh, community consultation in their quote to do that job. So Joe um, did get here in time for that um, before we appointed that company and was able to influence positively that there will be a fair bit more public consultation and it does take the form of that rates review committee to some extent but also an internal councillor working group. So yeah, we'll get Joe to bring an update report, our director which is back into February and just allow us to get um, where that's up to. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Nothing else I'll put it all in favour uh, against Kerry. Uh, the next report before you is 8.3, purchase of 57 Hawkins Street, Howlam, with vacant land adjacent to the Howlam Resource Centre and Library. Council has negotiated the purchase of the land at 57 Hawkins Street as per the noted resolution uh, from the December 9, 2019 meeting, and the contracts for the purchase at a price of 72000 have been exchanged. And the recommendation before you is that Council confirm the actions of the Mayor and General Manager regarding the purchase and authorise the common seal to be affixed to the, doc the purchase documents. Thank you. Moved by Council Whitechurch, seconded by Council Legal. Any questions or comments, Councillors? If not, I shall put it all in favour. Aye. Against Kerry. 
Next item is item 8.4, McCarthy Street, uh, Mulwala, surface land adjacent to Councillor Depot site, proposed subdivision development sales land, confidential. The recommendation is the Council prefer the item to the closed session under section 10A part 2 of the Local Government Act as it relates to items of a commercial and confidential nature. Thank you. Moved by Councillor Wales, seconded by Councillor Law. All in favour? Aye. Aye. Against carried. Next item, 8.5, Riverina uh, Regional Library Annual Report for 2018-19. Uh, Federation Council is a member of the Riverina Regional <coughs> Library and the Riverina Regional Library Annual Report details the library service provided at Corowa, Howlong and Mulwala. The report shows loans of uh, 41,652 and visits of uh, 30,524 along with other key information. And the recommendation is that Council note the River and the Regional Library Annual Report for the year ended 20, uh, 30 June 2019. Thank you. Moved by Councillor Thomas, seconded by Councillor Kennedy. Any questions or comments? Councillor um, Thomas, ladies before gentlemen, thank you. Okay. Uh, I find it really exciting because I'm actually a delegate on this particular uh, meeting and I love going on with my Councillor Lord. And I really enjoy going twice a year up to Wagga. And sometimes you have actually been hosted in Naranja before. I always think the Federation could host at some stage, it would be brilliant. Mm. Uh, this annual report actually really gives us a clear understanding of how important our library ser services are. But the expanding diversity which is happening with our libraries, you know, they're just not where you, somewhere where you go and borrow books anymore. They are just so much more and they're delivering so much more, which is really great for our communities. But I'd also really like to thank our um, Federation staff who have an input into this annual report. I think it's important because we all should be going and thanking those staff because of the work they do, especially some of our smaller centres. So they're not only our library staff, but they're juggling other things as well, like you know, general um, questions from our communities, um, taking rates, etc., etc. So let's thank them next time you catch up with them. And also the important and valuable connection that we're getting from the um, mobile library service that visits five of our. Um, Communities in Federation Council area. Just brilliant. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Thomas. And, and Councillor Thomas, I'd suggest you put Federation Council's name forward for uh, one of those meetings. Yeah. Uh, Councillor Longley, did you <laughs> want to point? Just a question. The loans. Okay. Is that those loans are borne by the library service or are we underwriting those? Yeah. Loans? They're like actually book loans. Book oh, loans. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Councillor Wells. Yeah, I'd just like to support Councillor Thomas's comments in the library. You must admit that the neighbour libraries are a very big plus of those little towns. Yeah, they have been through a few of those Thank you, Councillor Wells. If there be no, no further comments, I'll put it all in favour. Oh, I'm against the Okay, uh, next item on the agenda 8.6 uh, sale of land for unpaid rates. Federation Council conducted the sale of rates auctions on the 17th and 24th of August 2019, which 17 properties sold at auction and three properties were sold by private treaty after the auction. Funds available to distribute to interested parties prior to the sale was $106,483.44, and of this, $77,774.57 is required to be transferred to the Australian Securities and Investment Commission as the properties were held by oh, corporations. Okay. Yeah. The remaining $28,708.87 is required to be held in trust by council until those with an interest in the land prior to the sale come forward. There were inadequate proceeds on 10 properties to cover the outstanding rates and charges, and as a result, the total of $10,891.14 of rates and charges is required to be written off in accordance with Section 719 of the Act. The recommendation is that Council notes the report and that it authorise the holding of $28,708.87 in the trust account in accordance with sec Section 720 of the Local Government Act, provide the 77774 to ASIC in accordance with Section 601AD of the Corporations Act and that it abandon the amount of $10,891.14 in accordance with Section 719 of the Local Government Act. Thank you. Moved by Councillor Kendi, seconded by Councillor Law. Any questions or comments? If not, I'll put it. All in favour? Right. Against carry. Thank you very much, Jared. I'll now move on to the number no, item number nine, Director of Development Environmental Services Report. 
Thank you, Susan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Item 9.1 is the development application of sorry, building applications and the compliant development construction to get approved in the month of December. I'll be to take any questions. So we move, so you move by Councillor Longmire, seconded by Councillor Law. Uh, question, Councillor Longmire. Yeah, just a question without notice, uh, but at the last council meeting I asked for the opportunity of the regional towns and descriptive uh, DAs being applied for both through council and private certifiers. So have we got that coming? That is coming. We're working on a new system. Yeah. Um, and that will provide that information. Yep, we've also got that information coming through the LEP report. Well done, thank you. Thank you. If there's nothing further, I'll put it. All in favour? Mm -hmm. Against carried. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Item 9.2, the Dallas Development Application to approve under um, delegation of staff mm -hmm. for December 2019. Again, happy to take any questions. Thank you. Can we have a mover, please? Yeah. Council was moved by Councillor Thomas, seconded by Councillor Law. <coughs> Any questions or comments? I'll put it all in favour. Uh -huh. Against carried. Item 9.3, the Dallas Development Application to approve under Development Application to the Lodge. Uh, there's no change from December. Uh, the two applications are ready to go to the Joint Regional Planning Panel and all the conditions of consent have been negotiated with the developers. Thank you. Moved by Councillor Longley, seconded by Councillor Kennedy. Any questions or comments? Council? Okay, I'll put it. Thank you. All in favour? No. Against Carrick. Item 9.4 is the Kendra Assessment Report for the Urana Aquatic Centre, Legendary and Jetty. Uh, the Kendra Assessment Report is the first confidential for um, commercial confidence reasons. Thank you. Moved by Councillor Meagle and seconded by Councillor Law. Uh, any questions or comments? If not, I'll put it all in favour. Uh, uh, against carry. Item 9.5 is the tender assessment for the Coral Valley upgrade. Again, this one's referred to confidential for commercial confidence reasons. Moved by Councillor Meagle, seconded by Councillor Kennedy. All in favour? Uh, uh, against carry. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Susan. Um, item number 10, Director of Engineering Services. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Item 10 point one is the report of the progress of the works program. Which is there for information or questions? Thank you. Moved by Councillor Longmire. Seconded by Councillor Whitechurch. Any questions or comments? Councillor Longmire. Yeah, a question if I may to Mr Carmack in regard to the assessment of resealing roads, roads that have are particularly old, and there's been one in this particular that I've noted, the one that comes across from Federation Way to Hopefield Silo, I think it's called that road. Yep. Um, why are we resealing some of those roads where in some instances not altogether that one, but is this a policy going forward with some of those older roads that I keep bringing up about in the 50s that have been developed throughout this closer in part of the Shire? Who's making the assessment? Is that done on database in... in, in uh, in the, how old they are, or how is it assessed? It's what we're trying to do there is just hold them together. I mean, it, to me, you've got two options. We can either take the bitumen off and get rid of it and revert it to gravel road. And I think if we went to the rate phase, the rate phase would say we're happy with the little bit of seal we've got. So what we've, with those, I'm happy to just run a seal up them, which I think we did a couple of k's on Hopefield Siding Road, I think it's called, the one you're referring to, this year, and. I think that's the only way we're ever going to hold them together, to be able to re rehabilitate them completely and redo them, unless they're a bit, the traffic volumes go up on them. I then perhaps look at that, but for very low, they low traffic roads. I know when bitumen sealing first became popular in the 60s and 70s, a lot, a lot of councils have those, I call them now 12 foot seals, yeah. the old 3.6 metre seals. Um, yeah, today they're you rarely pass anybody on them, but occasionally you do. And but if you've got to drop a wheel off either side, which is, and again, we've got to watch our maintenance on those shoulders for that. But at the moment, my plan with them is just to put a reseal on. We can do that fairly inexpensively. You can put a seven mil seal on and you know, you're only looking at four dollars a square metre or something. <coughs> it becomes a fairly... And it, I had a look at a couple the other day that we've done and it, it 
does give them, I think it's going to increase their life quite dramatically. Yeah, I, I think that the other end, the other road I think often speak of is that end of the Emu Park Road towards um, Bull Plain Road. I think some of that was redone. As yeah, it was just about eight kilometres. And, and some of the ratepayers are coming to coming to me and saying, why are we just resealing and retarring those roads when they, they want starting again? This is what I keep harping on a bit. But in regard to some of those older roads, I think it's one of those ones that we need to have a full assessment and, and re-look at those and keep spending money on roads that have passed their life. I agree with that, but as I said to you, we haven't got the money to rehabilitate them, that's the problem. Um, to rehabilitate the amount of roads I've got in that condition, we need an injection of millions and millions of dollars. We just haven't got that sort of money, so we just council's going to have to concentrate on the strategies to hold them together. Um, whether there's some miracle cure down the track that I'm not aware of, we are going to try just reworking a couple of roads just to see if that's cost effective to go forward. Yeah, I'll bring the it problem we've got with a lot of those roads, they should never have been sealed to start with, to be quite honest. They should have been left as gravel roads because cool. it's just not the traffic volumes. For a bitumen road to operate, Properly, you need somewhere between 150 and 300 vehicles a day. Those roads are probably lucky if they get 20. Some of them have got less than that on. So and if they may, Mr. Mayor, just to finish on, in regard to some of the new um, stuff that we're putting on the roads, I know in one particular road out there, it's called um, the Felton Road, the surface that that's been done as a gravel road is as good as you'll find anywhere. It, it handles the wet, it handles, it's a really good surface. So some of the new Gravel that we've got available might be. You don't yeah. seem to agree with that. I, I do and I don't. Um, <laughs> Whitehead Street, a classic example. When I first came here, was a was a bitumen road. I think in the last 12 months we've graded that about seven or eight times. So you really start to then question why are we grading around seven or eight times, which is a gravel road, and that's getting rid of the gravel off it. Probably your life and before it's going to be regravel four or five years. Put it back and put a seal on it. Whether we put an other seal, one of those newer type seals we're using, we'll, we'll look at some other innovative ways um, to get around the problem. But yeah, we've got this council has got miles too much bitumen seal for the amount of traffic, the, the traffic volumes. Yeah. It's, it, it's one of those, and, and we're not the only council, there's councils everywhere in Australia have got the same problems where it was easy to do many years ago, and we, there was a lot of done, those narrow ones especially were done. Um, and just everybody's in the same problem. What do you do to try and hold them together? Do we do we have a program coming forward in regard to some of these? We're doing that every year. Any roads to recovery, we're yeah. allocating a certain amount yeah. of money to yeah. get on top of those. Yeah. Thanks, Mr. Carmel. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Carmel. I just actually want to commend. Um, I've been doing a fair bit of travelling out the northern side of the Shire in the last um, few weeks, heading sort of the Leeton that way. And Federation Way, like it's come up real well out there, outside of the Yarrana and even like Bull Plain Road, it's got a little bit of section to do and it's all going to be renewed. Now it's, um, they're doing a great job and what they've been put back down is, is spot on, so it's good to see that some done some good work. Thank you, Councillor Penny. Yeah. Councillor Meagle. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just um, taking up a point from Councillor Longmore, and I was going to ask Mr. Carmichael, is, what, have we got any data or impression of what that Otter Seal is, how that's working? Because to me that seems a an, an opportunity that we can use to perhaps <coughs> reduce the cost and reduce the maintenance without having to go the whole bitch and seal for some of those roads, and whether or not you think you've got any information? We haven't got a lot of, well, ours have only been down a couple of years. Narendra, Narendra Council is where we first picked it up from. There was a young engineer there that came out of uh, one of the countries overseas, somewhere where they do quite a bit of it. Um, Narendra's got about 50 k's down, I think, now. Um, and these are all holding up well. Um, certainly the expectation is that they will hold up, because the amount of bitumen that's in there should keep them. And the beauty about an olive seal is you can then just put a reseal over it later on. Yeah. But as an initial treatment, it's, and especially in areas around urban areas where we've been made and work in the rural in the past, when I've had complaints of dust into properties, I've, I've actually sealed a piece of road past properties, um, but this the other seals around town are, are certainly working well with the dust suppressant as well as giving that surface. We just don't have enough data to really go... No, not at this stage. It's too much. Good. We've only had ours down a couple of years, so you need, you know, 10 years. You need to sort of go through that first cycle before you have to re rehabilitate it in some form before you get that sort of information. But the, the feedback we're getting from the 
companies that are supplying those, the products uh, are saying that the, the life's there. So. Very good. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Watchers, did you have a comment? Yeah, just before Councillor Kennedy made his comment on the, the positivity of the roads and those sorts of things, it was interesting, I was at how long uh, the Australia Day Awards and people, more than one, had come up to me and said what a good job the council was doing with their surrounds and the, the gardens and the roads. And, you know, I think from previous councils over the years and certainly in my short term, you go to any public gathering, you're normally getting tugged on the coat about a problem, but um, it's always nice that you're getting good comments and it's great to get feedback to the program stuff. Yeah, absolutely. And I have to support that. The, the comments are always flowing in from the public in relation to the work that's going on around the so it's a credit to your department, Steve. Thank you. So uh, if there's no further questions, I'll put it all in favour. Against right. Carrick. Bottom 10.2 is the Capital Works Program. Touches on some of the stuff that's in the above. We'll see down towards the bottom of that, hopefully. I think. There is, um, just getting back to what Councillor Longmore was saying, I see a roads to recovery section there. I've just put all the roads that are in the roads to recovery, so they're the ones we've done with reseals this year. Mm -hmm. uh, so your major projects and your roads to recovery, your Redlands Road, finishing, uh, no, sorry, um, mm -hmm. the, um, what was the other one that was mentioned? Um, full plane. Full, full plane that was done out of um, from the communities, the work that we're doing out there. And yeah, so apart from, and we've also included a bit more extra funding recently just to finish that last 200 metres on Red on uh, Bull Plain. Uh, we had hoped to get funding out of Black Spot to upgrade the intersection of Bull Plain and um, Spring Drive, but unfortunately we've had two goes of that one through the federal where you've got have three deaths, and one through the state where you've got two deaths, and we've both been rejected. They came back to the last one and said no one's actually been killed at the intersection. Once I killed it, which I beg to differ. But one went killed it. Yeah, I'm aware of that as well. I went to body. I'll just get a move, council. Moved by council Kendi and seconded by councillor Law. Um, any questions or comments? If not, I'll put it all in favour mm -hmm. against Kerry. And ten point three. Is just to report on where we're up to with the projects done in the stronger communities. Most of them are all progressing as of this stage, I think, now. One at uh, Urana, but not at Urana, at Oakland, sorry, but the football ground has been taken over by the boys at the back, so they're getting a design done for that. I know the one at the high school, all the work's been done there during the School vacation breaks, uh, I presume that's the football and the oval there is just about ready. And I've word back from the contractor for the pool in the last, late last week, they'll have to start to move some site facilities in next week or the week after, so that's the all getting in. How long? Multi purpose hall is well underway. Excellent, I'm just going to move in a second, please. Move by Councillor Neagle, seconded by Councillor Law. Uh, any questions or comments, councillors? Council Meagle. Yeah, just one comment, Mr Mayor, to say that uh, we received an awful lot of money for the Stronger Communities Fund three years ago, and whilst that the community was very keen and expected everything to appear in the space of months, uh, this coming year is going to be where the rubber hits the road in terms of the, the completion of a, a lot of projects, so it's a really exciting time for Federation Council coming forward. Yeah, Council Meagle, just on that comment, um, we're under a fair bit of pressure as a council. Um, I feel that, that uh, pressure's lifted because there's been a lot of uh, projects finished and opened. And uh, just the latest being the, um, the Clum Bay Ski Club toilets. And I'd like to thank Councillor Kennedy for travelling miles to um, visit that opening on the weekend. So thank you very much for that. But that was another uh, great opening, good, good crowd and, and excited people for that new facility. Uh, any further comments, Council? If not, I'll put it. All in favour? Uh, against carry. Item 10.4 is the tender assessment report, which has been a long time in the making, this one. When I first came here, we were talking about this, but finally got to the tender stage. And the recommendation is that it go to uh, be referred to 
it's confidential. There's no more information. So that would be confidential. Moved by Councillor Longmore, seconded by Councillor Longley. All in favour? No. Right. Against carried. Item 10.5, which is a tender assessment report for the All Abilities Playground. And it's been a while in the making again. There's some information there, and it's recommended that it be referred to confidential. Again, mm -hmm. for the same reason. Moved by Council Law, seconded by Council Kennedy. All in favour? No. Uh -huh. Against carried. Oh, oh, very good. Thank you very much. Um, that's the end of our reports. We're up to item number 11. Notice of motion, question without notice. There'll be Neil. Uh, no, notice of motion, sorry. I'm sorry, Councillor uh, Thomas. Council yeah. Thomas. Sorry, I missed that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, the, the uh, Yarrawonga Mawala Weir Bridge closure. The motion is that Council. Federation Council urgently communicate with the NDBA in re regards to the date of the closure of the Arawonga Mawala Weir Bridge. And the background um, NDBA thus far have not provided a clear timetable to our communities who have been anticipating a 2020 closure. Moved by Councillor Thomas and seconded by Councillor Wales. Uh, any questions or comments? Question with clarity in regard to question with notice, or is it a notice of motion? No, I'm notice of motion. Notice, notice of motion. Yeah, the way it's read, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We've, yeah we'll change that, sorry. Yeah. Um, any further comments? Or? Yes. Yeah. Uh, just as uh, I have a bit of other information about that. Uh, the main, the other bridge as well, the old bridge, or the main bridge, my mother, the young woman. RMS are planning to do major repairs to that bridge, which are going to span over about seven or eight months, starting this year as well, which will mean I'm anticipating they're talking about doing it at night. It will probably mean that that bridge will be closed at the night time at certain times, I would think, because some of the main trusses are going to be replaced underneath the bridge, apparently. So they are negotiating with us at the moment to set up a depot site in Mongwala, and uh, that's the reason we're aware of it at this stage, but that is planned sometimes. So I think it's quite fully support, not that I'm against it, but I fully support <laughs> the motion that we don't like when it is <laughs> <a motion. laughs> when it is kind of time, because I really want to know as well. Mm. Yeah, uh, excellent. Uh, was there another question yeah. from the councils? Councillor Thomas. Councillor Thomas. Oh, I really think you know, it has all been covered. I just had some supporting evidence. I mean, no, really, I really wanted to know from my fellow councillors, we've all known about this magic year called 2020, mm. you know, that could have been 10 years ago, could have been 15 years ago, but here we are in 2020 and there's really been no public consultation, let alone with, our, with LGA, so either former CORA or current federation, mm. and I don't know whether Moira has anything, any more updates than what we have in terms of um, consistency of delivery between the two states, so I just think with the urgency that we just really need to move on with mm. it grab those contacts and get them on the ground and say, hey, what's happening, especially in light of what our director, Carmichael, has just brought to the table in terms of the proposed work. I mean, who, who in the room besides, you know, when you found out, there's been certainly no disclosure to the general public in terms of these proposed works for 2020 on the main bridge. So thanks for bringing them to the table today. So, yeah, good. Thanks, Councillor Thomas. I suggest we build a bridge and get over it. <laughs> Oh, 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 you've got to do better than that. <laughs> 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 no, actually, yeah. did I put that? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> all in favour? Yeah. Against Kerry. Item number what 12. Order, Mr. Mayor, regard, was there a second or was there a second? Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, uh, Council of Wales. Well, sorry. Okay, thank you. Good work. All good. Okay, item number 12, reports from committees. Um, we'll start with 12.1, the local traffic committee. Uh, we've got, um, uh, there was a bit of conversation about running through a few of the minutes to, to Councillor Watcher. Uh, Mr Mayor, it's a, obviously a little pet one of mine, the traffic committee. Um, for quite a while, Council or myself has been pushing that nothing ever happens from this traffic committee. In fact, I always said the traffic committee was very, although it's compulsory, was doing nothing. Um, repetitive minutes, repetitive things with no actions. And this time, we've now got the most detailed traffic committee and meeting that's ever happened. Um, there's been suggestions on 
different ideas and different things. But, I mean, obviously I'll, I'll pick one out like the, uh, the Hermitage Drive, um, Gallipoli Street, Door Street, the intersection of the Child Care Centre. We had a presentation to Council in August 2018 and a petition was presented <coughs> where the traffic committee continually supplied nothing and, and now we're nearly up to 19 months later they've come up with an idea that we put in some calming devices. Now the problem that I see is this traffic committee, all this report which is quite detailed now, the recommendation at the bottom of it will be for council to adopt those minutes. But nowhere do any of these things get acted on nor do they get discussed on. I would have thought that a council, and some of these things are, are quite pertinent to each particular town, but not necessarily to the town themselves, there's people that are wanting answers and wanting stuff done, and it's not happening. Um, I don't know where we move when this report comes to council, whether it's workshops and each particular item spoke about, because if you spoke about some of them things, um, and some of them here, obviously the IGA car parks come up as a new one, but for my wireless speed zone that Councillor Kennedy and, and others have brought to the table, has been going for a hell of a long time, and we're not getting any action on it. I just, I'd be happy to be led by somebody else as to what we do, but I'd like to see each one of the items identified and acted, so that we can get things moving in that area. Um, just thing, yeah. uh, okay, well, Councillors, I might get a mover in a second if that's okay. Would you like to move it, please, Councillor yeah, Waterchurch, and seconded by Councillor Thomas. Councillor Thomas. There you go, Bob. This is more just a question. You know how we're in the process of um, pulling together LEP from the former Urana and Cora? So when we develop our LEP, is there opportunity that, that as a document, does that end, add weight to some of these scenarios that have been presented to us in the um, particular committee reports? For instance, obviously, traffic and traffic road rules and speed zones and things like that. So when you're looking at an LEP, obviously there's different parts to your townships and our rural roads and expanding, expanding. So would that then give you a really good basis then to go back to the traffic committee and say, our LEP, this is what our vision is, this is what our future is. Am I on the right track? Yeah, I, I would say the LEP is probably creating changes that would have to go back to the traffic committee yeah. and, and as a, they're a mandatory organisation um, their recommendations will come forward regardless and then council will have to work over them which will obviously identify through this their recommendations today mm. before we adopt it. Would you like to make comments? Uh, thank you Mr Mayor. The LEP and the local strategic planning statement will have traffic impact statement with it oh, okay. as a proposed work. However, a lot of the uh, things that are coming through traffic committee are governed by state and federal legislation. So we'll have a certain amount of impact, but not entire control. <coughs> Steve may want to say something. You may not. Comment, Mr Mayor. Yeah, oh, Councillor Long. There is, having uh, seen uh, how um, New South Wales transport operates and, uh, and the slowness of any, um, any response to the council of the uh, traffic um, island of uh, how long. I think that was five years in the making to get that through. Um, would it be advisable we invite the, our state member and whoever's in charge of the roads from water or, or higher to a council meeting? or round table and we can talk to them about our dissatisfaction and the delays in, in the processes of getting things done because quite obviously some of these things are safety issues. Yeah. <coughs> For sure, Councillor Long. Councillor Long. Yeah, well, I, I don't agree with half the stuff they put in there, to be honest. Like, and and there's a like, the motion here we root from Council Kenny and Council Longmore that we turn it back to 50 k and everybody said no. So who's the boss? But we've got more power than the traffic committee, or I don't know how, how it works. Like, and 25B, they want to increase the 50k zone a mile further out along the, along the Tokemore Road. Like, who gets to say it? But uh, just, we're trying to get taken back to 60, and then they're trying to increase more 50. So I, I don't agree with any of this thing. I, I'm going to vote against recommending it. So it's just wrong. I, I, just, I just need to be, I think the whole thing needs to be discussed. Do you, like, recommend, 
Well, I know that RMS Road and London Council Road. Well, who, who makes a decision? Yeah, you read that there, what they recommend. Do we have to, do we have to take it on board? Or do we have to, you know? We, um, we'd certainly put a recommendation forward and RMS would have, on their roads would have the ultimate um, say. Mm. And, and the same for council roads, then it would come back to council mm. as to the decision. Yeah, that's why I was really late this morning because it took me 24 seconds longer to come down the road. Councillor yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nagel. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I'm just wondering, considering the concerns of some of my fellow councillors regarding the these minutes no, and reports, would it, if the mover and second are happy, would it be prudent that um, those minutes not be adopted but be noted and perhaps uh, and a report uh, brought to Council for um, discussion so that Council can then get some I input and impact back um, uh, regarding the issues that we are all seeing in our communities. So if they're happy with that, I just modify that recommendation Move. that they just be noted rather than adopted. Move to defer. Move to the third uh, next week. Uh, workshop it as you said, and and bring it. Well, a report be brought uh, from because most of the recommendations of this are uh, actually from council staff, either engineering or road safety. So, if that's the case, then we need to no. hear from these guys from the staff what what their plan of attack is, yeah. given those minutes, and therefore we can then have some input into um, what they're thinking and what um, regulations and restrictions that are, are in place that we have to consider. Definitely. I think it would be a cleaner way to go forward rather than this. Council Watson. Yeah. Sorry, Mr Mayor. I, um, when you opened the discussion uh, prior to the mover and second, I, I know that we've made a, a note there. It's getting adjusted now is to move the recommendation. Uh, I'm with Councillor Kenny and I take on board exactly what Councillor Mayor was saying. In moving that motion, whether we can amend it now or it, it's still up to be noted, that we obviously note the, the minutes of the traffic committee, but each month, not just this month, but the traffic committee minutes be acted on at the very next workshop with the councillor's decisions put forward to RMS council staff or the appropriate section. So that every traffic committee meeting is acted on. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the mover being councillor Whitechurch. Are you happy with that wording? We will second that. Well, I think it's uh, in line of what Councillor Meagle was saying. I think we need something firm in there to be saying that the traffic committee minutes are uh, rec uh, ex adopted, but then put to the very next council workshop with each item agenda, with each minute of agenda, uh, item discussed for decision. They've been noted, not adopted. Yeah, yeah. just noted, yeah. Just noted. noted yeah. Otherwise, it'll go nowhere again. Yeah. yeah. But I think that would follow through, Mr. Mayor, that now, look, I don't think they meet every month, but whenever they meet, um, and these minutes are, even though there's a lot of delay in, in those and some controversy about whether you have had input or not to the local road issues, I think it would go without saying now that as those minutes come forward after a meeting's held, um, that you would get across those um, before they get to the council meeting. So whether it's in a briefing or or it's the workshop the first month and then the second month. Some of them have to be done urgently because they're events and approvals, traffic plans. But I was just looking at those, Steve. I think they're all just... Um, yeah, I think the other thing we've got, I think we've got to be a bit careful with the speed ones because I don't know that we've got the legal, legal power to set speed limits. So I think that is a state government responsibility. I need to, I'll have to read the Act again and mm -hmm. the regulations to see who has got the final say. Mm -hmm. I don't think councils can just yeah. put up their own speed limits to block the roads without a whole heap of... Yeah, yeah without a... But could, could put a recommendation for Oh, it. certainly yeah. I don't. I think it needs to be debated and everything else and quite often if you get somebody in here that's got a be in their bonnet about something they can... I've, I've sat on these committees in other councils many times and you, you just shake your head sometimes with some of the decisions are very hard to... To uh, sway bureaucrats at times, but yeah, I just need to read the act again. And, but I don't disagree with what we're saying that we need to, and at least all these have got an action, got a person action that a lot of them have against them. So some of them can certainly go forward. Thank you, through, Mr. Mayor. To Mr. Carpenter, I'll make them separate to the issue, uh, just in conversation. The um, speed zone item 
LTC 1829 was a speed zone review with Dave Bale. The process that we had to do to get that changed from 50 back to 60. Was that drawn out? Was that through RMS? It just went through no mm. one, there was no feedback. It alludes to my, the, the recommendation from the traffic committee on that item is uh, councils have changed over the signs from 50 to 60 kilometres. That's a fairly easy fix. Well, Coming to get your tyres and go and change the sign from 50 to 60 k. And there was no process. Please. Yeah, it's got advertising. <laughs> oh, well, let's give the, my whale of an advertisement and then see if we can send 2 bucks down to you and change the sign and see what feedback we get there. Just, just a little comment on the one in Daysdale. If you really want to know what the speed limit through Daysdale is at the moment, it's 100 kilometres an hour. It has been forever. I've got to court there, my colleague. Councillor Wiles. I'm on the committee, but I'm only observing that can't vote, which is a bit sad. Like a lot of policing, I lost it Yes, no, fair enough, Councillor Wiles, your point taken. Um, okay, there's no, nothing further. I think that covers it. We just noted it each time and then adopted the following meeting. So, uh, all in favour? Yeah. Uh, against Kerry. 12.2, Corosayo Consultative Committee. Um, then it's held in that, um, that meeting. There's a recommendation there. Would someone like to move that? Yeah, meeting? Moved by Councillor Longmire, seconded by Councillor Thomas. Any questions or comments? All in favour? Against Carrick. And number 13, reports from delegates, verbal reports from delegates. Do we have any council? Council Kendi. And uh, I was lucky enough to be driving through the countryside yesterday, <laughs> coming back from work from Leeton and uh, rang the mayor, and he just got to open the Miranda new toilet block out there. And uh, I was lucky enough to pull in there and got a, a cruise along the river by one of the locals. And, uh, it's a bloody good setup out there. I'd recommend anyone get a look at it. It's, uh, it's um, very pretty long, and the speed boats and the people out there was, was, was highly recommended. What done that that all talk about they've done is, is a sensational job. Yes, yeah. thank you, Councillor Kendi. Uh, Councillor Donald. Uh, even though January was a holiday period, we've all had a really uh, busy month when we've had the opportunity to have a busy time, which is great. And Welcome back, it's really good to be back and to the, into the second <coughs> thing. Uh, I was so pleased that I was able to attend the emergency response meeting in light of what's been happening with our neighbouring LGAs. I think it's important that we're able to um, go over that and have that opportunity to review <coughs> what we've done thus far and what Council had been contributing to our neighbouring LGAs. And I'd like to congratulate Council for their quick response to our neighbouring LGAs. Well done. Uh, it was exciting to be able to go on the bus and look at our round two and delivery of the federal government drought funding. Uh, it was a great opportunity to not only engage with a lot of our communities but also have a good look at what's happening on the ground and what's potentially happening on the ground because it gives us clearer insight to when we actually come to our February meeting, you know. Everything looks great on a piece of paper, but until you actually see it and look at it in the logistics, it's a really good opportunity to do that. And I look forward to being part of re-engaging the um, Federation Council Rural Working Group in the first week of February, I think that will be happening, hopefully. Uh, dinner with our Australian app ambassador at um, Border was the hoot, so that was really good. And of course the Australia Day celebrations at Howler, and we've all discovered the lovely Memorial Park. Thank you, you Councillor Thomas. Councillor Neagle. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, just to concur with Councillor Thomas, I thought the bus trip was a really worthwhile exercise because of the number of projects that um, are available, the minute, uh, finite amount of funding we've got, and it was really good. And to um, the staff, to Ronnie Anderson for driving us around, and, um, it was a very worthwhile project. And I agree with Councillor Kennedy, the Columbus Creek um, toilet uh, addition was a brilliant piece of work. Uh, Australia Day, I thought, was excellent, well attended. Congratulations to the Helen community for putting it up, and I thought that uh, it once again shows the uh, number of wonderful spots that we have in our LGA. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Meagle. Councillor Wojcic. Yeah. Mr Mayor, if I could uh, just echo the words of uh, Councillor Meagle with this radar, I thought it was, was terrific. Um, how long did you raise the bar and Councillor Long did a great job with our ambassador. 
there's, there's another thing I'd like to make note of, and I think Council owe the Coral Rotary Club a letter of appreciation for the work that they put in for the whole weekend of Australia Day in Corowa. Whilst Corowa wasn't the designated town for the Australia Day formal ceremony and activities, each town obviously has the right to go and put their own activities on, which Mawala had their, their different things on, but um, the Rotary Club of Corowa, had there not have been any input from these guys, there would have been no Burners Ball, no Friday night dinner, no Rotary Market and no parade. Um, I know they're a small band of people and I, like all them clubs are, but take what Corowa Rotary Club did out of Corowa, on the Australia Day weekend, Corowa had nothing on. And nobody had come forward or included council to put something on because we've got our head on things. So please pay that back to Rotary Council Moogle and I think council really Council, would you like to move a motion and um, to get a letter to send off official letter? I think that's very appropriate. We move a motion to the Coral Rotary Club in appreciation for the effort on Australia Day that they continued ever throughout the year in their activities. Thank you, Council Watchers, and seconded by Council Thomas. Um, it, yeah, so I couldn't um, not say something about <coughs> the Australia Day how long. I, I thought it was fantastic. Yeah, Absolutely fantastic. And they, they certainly have raised the, the bar and and um, the beautiful park in there on the river has um, got all its uh, all the notation needed. The comments that came out of the crowd, the biggest one was nobody knew where it was. So there's uh, there's something we've got to deal with in the future to to, to make it known because it's a pretty special spot. And and the, I love the quirky bit with the girls coming down with the the ponies and presenting the flag. And it was well done. To, well done, Councillor Longley, and to that Howland community. Uh, any further delegates' reports from councillors? If not, Just I'll another comment on oh, the Australian Day ceremony. I think the council need to um, congratulate the two ladies employees that organised Kirsty Crockett in particular. That was her first major event for Federation Council and did a mighty, mighty, mighty job. And Amber Harvey, who is her boss, and uh, the two ladies and so well organised. Absolutely, and of course our speaker, I thought he was very, very good, yeah, very good. Which one, the mayor or the other one? But, <laughs> and then, how's the law? It's no point going over everything that everybody else says but they've attended. But you can if you like. All basically attended, but I thought it was amazing the number of people who came up and thanked council for the memorial park. The people who didn't know it was there, and the people who said how stunning it was. Mm. It was lovely to receive that accolation. Excellent, Councillor Law. Okay, uh, if there's no further reports, I'll put them all in favour. No, against Kerry. Uh, would you like to break from morning two, Councillors? Otherwise, we'll be finished too early. Or, or we could do the correspondence if you like before morning two. Or no. Yeah, do the correspondence. correspondence. Yeah, yeah, correspondence. Yeah. Okay, item number 14, uh, requiring Council action or information. Um, I'll just run down those items and Councillors, if you'd like to choose one out that is. 14.1, um, the Honourable Melinda Pavey MP for Water, Property and Housing, uh, a letter from her, Australian Local Government Association, that was uh, calling for notice of motions to the National Assembly, a Coral set, um, South Public School, um, that was a thank you letter to me, did you want to yeah, that, that was a pretty good one, uh, Coral <laughs> High School, um, another thank you letter, and Lowestar Recreation Reserve Committee. Okay. Uh, that was um, commending the work that Council had undertaken out there. So Lone Star, thank Lone Star. you. Okay, Councillor Thomas, would you like <laughs> to make a. Yeah, I would like to talk. Yeah. Uh, just in regard to the letter that has been received from the Honourable uh, Linda Pavey, yes. uh, I noticed that within the content she talks about the delivery of the water infrastructure fund the value of $200 million. I just wonder was there opportunity for us to have conversation with James McTavish mm -hmm. in regards to what's happening at Baldale and Safedale? Yeah. And yeah. has that happened or is it going to happen or is it on the agenda to happen? I'll have to um, say goodbye on that mm -hmm. one, Councillor Kendi. Um, can anyone on the right us on that? Councillor Thomas today. Yeah, yeah I thought Council it was a, Thomas, quite an interesting letter where sure. I think <laughs> Councillor Thomas did raise it before about the New South Wales government's lack of um, progress on their sharing plans, etc., has sort of held up uh, some funding or could threaten a lot of that funding. And more locally, like with Daysdale, 
and Baldale. Baldale, uh, the Director of Engineering, knows more, but that's been referred after our public meeting out there. He's uh, got GHG to have a quick review of those earlier reports and those options just to do our due diligence on making sure that we have got the best figures on what those preferred options are on that one. And But we certainly would. We haven't had a meeting with James for a while, the cross-border commissioner, so we'd certainly um, take up that opportunity to meet with him and Mr Clancy, I would have thought, yeah. Councillor Thomas, would you like to move a motion for 14.1 in relation to that? Yes, I'll move. Okay, sure. thank you, Councillor Thomas. Would you like to word that motion, please? <laughs> um, and I'll get a second to ask you. Um, just clarification, uh, General Manager, has James McCavish uh, changed his title? Is he still a cross border commissioner or is he with the DPI now in terms of their water resources? He's both now, yeah. He's so he got seconded across onto that with the drought, but he's still yeah, got his. Okay. His normal role is still back. I did note, also note uh, in uh, Honourable Cavey's uh, citations, he has mentioned a DPI contact for the southern part mm -hmm. of, the, um, of the area as well. I would assume they might be based in Wagga, so yep. I think his name was um, Peter Lido, he's in Water Utilities, so yep. there's opportunity there. And in terms of putting forward a recommendation that Federation Council host a round table discussion with urgency mm -hmm. <laughs> to discuss the ongoing and potential water related issues for our townships of Daysdale and Fallout with well, I suppose either or James or Peter <coughs> I would presume mm -hmm. and our local member <coughs> Justin Clancy. I was just wondering, Council Thomas, whether you wanted to be more general and say yes, Federation like Council, uh, because yes, we can like include that. anything that comes up. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. 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 in the meantime, depending on the time frame, yes. when we can engage. And after that, they'll issue. put another related issue. Oh, that's it? Yes, that would be good. Because there's also some quite pertinent questions in there about not only, but you know, the draft continues what. Council got in mind for X, Y, and Z. So. Yeah. Thank you. Could I get a second, that, please, Council? Mm -hmm. Seconded by Council Longway. Any further questions or comments? If not, I'll put it all in favour mm -hmm. against carriage. Uh, Councillors, um, I'll move these in a block 14.2 to 14.5. Moved by Councillor Neagle. Seconded by Councillor Longley. Any questions or comments, Councillors? If not, I'll put it all in favour mm -hmm. against carriage. <coughs> Would someone like to move um, council to move move by council and legal, second by council and legal? Make one along with All in favour? Against carry. Now what are we doing? Who is that one? Legal and legal.